What's going on guys, Josh Pocock here. And ever since Zuck started doing jujitsu and hanging out with Dana White, he has been on an absolute roll. And today marks the day that Meta drops Llama 3.2, their first ever open source multimodal model. Today we're gonna go over the different models, talk about their capabilities and see how they actually compare to some of the frontier models. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so here we are on the Meta Llama website, and I'll leave links to all the websites we talk about in the description down below so you can check these out more in depth. But here we have Introducing Llama 3.2, the open source AI model you can fine tune, distill, and deploy anywhere is now available in more versions. Choose from 1B, 3B, 11B, or 90B, or continue building with Llama 3.1. All right, guys, so just to sum up, there are four new models. Two of them are lightweight and can be run on the edge or, you know, basically with in your device, such as computers, whatever, whatever type of device you have. And then the other two are the multimodal models, which you're going to need to run uh, in the cloud. OK, and I'll show you how you can do both of those or I'll talk about how you can do both of those. And then and then in some future videos, we will be testing out these models. So make sure to stay tuned for that. All right. So here you can see on device, like we mentioned, this is basically like on the edge where you can use it in phones, computers, whatever the case may be. So for devs building phone apps or whatever, this is pretty cool. Um, and we're going to continue continuously see this trend of where uh, these models are going to be able to be run on your own devices. You know, you're going to probably in a year or two from now, we'll have these open source models that are super, super powerful, more powerful than Claude 3.5 that are basically run on your MacBook, right? So pretty cool to see. And I definitely think you should not underestimate open source if you are, because we're seeing the progression so rapidly. And uh, yeah, Meta is doing a crazy job with uh, a lot of this stuff recently. So then multimodal, so you can use the 11B or 90B models for image use cases, such as transforming an existing image into something new or getting information from an image of your surroundings. So both of these types of models open up a realm of possibilities, especially with them being, I guess, open source. I mean, some people say that's a debatable where it's actually like fully open source, but uh, in the sense of what people are talking about, I guess, you know, compared to something like OpenAI, at least these are, you know, more open source. I know some people say that it's not really, but whatever. For example, like with multimodal now, image capabilities, I mean, that's very important for many different things you could build. And then, like I said, on device is very important if you're building like apps or just anything on that you want your users to be able to use on the device. And then Llama has been pushing a lot this whole Llama stack, um, which is seamlessly build agentic applications from a comp comprehensive tool chain. They essentially want you to build like your whole entire stack with their Llama tool stack. And uh, we'll get into that in just a second, a little bit more, but it's interesting because they're kind of like we see they're kind of, I guess, like late to the game of AI comparative to like something like open AI. So they're coming with the approach of just light the ground on fire and basically open source everything to, you know, comp compete with their competition. Right. So it seems to be doing pretty good for them. Right. Um, and then the llama stack. So a streamlined developer experience, build faster, deploy anywhere. So you can see different stack devs, llama stack API. They got a new CLI, uh, the llama stack distribution, um, partner API providers, models. So you can read more about this for developers, for partners and distributors, so standard API. Um, they got a SDK, all that good stuff. And then here's some model evaluations. So we evaluate performance on over 150 benchmark data sets to span a wide range of languages. For vision LLMs, we evaluated performance on benchmarks for image understanding and visual reasoning. In addition, we performed extensive human reasoning that compare Llama 3.2 with competing models in a wide range of scenarios. So we can see 3.2, 1B, 3B versus Gemma 2, 2B, IT, and then I 3.5 mini IT. We can see the scores here for different categories, so I'm not going to go through them all, but you can see they're, you know, comparative to the models in this category, they're doing pretty good. Right. If you want to check this out more in depth, like I said, links going to be down below. And of course, in terms of popularity, just with like downloads and stuff, Llama is leading with the open source AI game. They're obviously the biggest company in the space, really doing something like this on a large scale. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting to see what they're up to lately uh, in terms of open source. Now, they do have a more in-depth blog right here, which is a 15 minute read. So obviously, I'm not going to go 
through all this, but I would definitely suggest checking it out for a more in-depth um, review on these models. So it's also pretty cool because Llama 3.1 1B and 3B models support context windows of up to 128K tokens and are state of the art in their class or on device case uh, use cases like summarization, instruction, following, and rewriting tasks running locally on at the edge. If you think about it, a lot of these frontier models aren't even 128K or just are a little bit above 120k like uh, 8k like 200k context window or whatnot so having an open source model like this where you can run it on your device and having that large of a context window is really game changing and i think this is really interesting you know speaking of the llama stack and i'm interested i'm very interested to see how this develops because they're really pushing this and i think it leads to like where metas and zuck and you know their whole grand vision of this thing is and that's kind of their gameplay in this ai race is to get people to build on their open source tools and that's you know what zuck has said so the llama stack which will greatly simplify the way developers work with llama models in different environments including single node on-prem cloud and any device enabling turnkey deployment of rag retrieval augmented generation and tool enabling applications with integrated safety so it's pretty cool because i think it's going to this whole llama stack is going to bring maybe some more complex things that you would have to do with ai uh, and make it a lot easier, seamless, more integrated, and bring it to a wider um, net of devs, as well as, you know, obviously their whole reach with Instagram, Facebook, you know, them integrating within their apps closely, the metaverse, and now with their whole Orion glasses, which I'll leave a clip to at the end of this video, so make sure to stay tuned from that, where Zuck's announcing these. If you haven't seen these, these are pretty cool. But integrating their open source tools in these type of softwares is obviously going to bring AI to the masses in a uh, way that a lot of other companies can't. All right, guys, and we can also see the vision instruction tuned benchmarks um, for Llama 11B and 90B comparative to Claude 3 Haiku and GPT-40 Mini. And we can see here on these scores like MMMU, MMMU Pro, um, all these different ones right here, you know, text, image right here for different uh, tests. It is really giving a lot of these top frontier models obviously these aren't like clots on at 3.5 or anything like this but it's beating them in some categories and giving them a run for their money um and we're gonna like i said we're gonna be doing some tests on uh these and i'll even do a couple little tests just you know just to see some of these vision capabilities right now in today's video but we're gonna be doing more extensive testing like we have for a lot of different models in future videos so make sure to stay tuned for that all right so here we can see an image understanding demo uploading an image now it's analyzing this image of this fireplace and boom gives a description modern open plan plan living space uh complement black leather etc detect objects fireplace suggest alternatives replacement su uh, suggestions so pretty cool stuff wow so and then it's even you know generating alternative uh images based off that that's really cool all right, and here they talk about how they actually created these lightweight and high performing models using pruning and distillation so pruning reduces model size by selectively removing parts of the network while maintaining performance and distillation transfers knowledge from larger models so like llama 3.18 b and 70 b to smaller models and in post training they use alignment techniques and synthetic data generation to enhance capabilities like summarization and reasoning here we can see a mobile writing assistant demo right here so running a sick letter to your boss and as it's generating this pretty quickly on the mobile device which is pretty impressive all right so you can go ahead and start using llama 3.2 today either on hugging face or you can go to olama and i'll show you how to do this in just a second if you're not familiar with olama and then you can also use it on sites like together ai as well as grok okay grok you can see right here uh, we can access llama 3.2 the 90b text preview Llama 3.23, uh, 3B, Llama 3.21B, and Llama 11B. If you don't know about Grok, it's essentially really quick inference times for LLM models. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. But I'm going to be showing you with Together AI. And Together AI is something I've talked about in other videos. If you're not familiar with it, you can go sign up for free. I believe they give you a certain amount of free credits that you can try it out with. I don't know if it's five or ten dollars or if they changed it at this point, but I remember when I Lasted a video on it they uh, were giving away some free credits but before we get started with together ai i just want to show you that if you're not familiar with olama 
basically go to oloma.com link will be down below you simply just sign up or download you can just click download actually and it's going to download the olama app on your desktop whether that's mac windows whatever the case may be once you do that you're just going to set up olama and then it's very easy you can just come here to llama 3.2 which will be in the description you can select the model of your choice uh so the 1b or 3b and then you would just copy and paste this olama run llama 3.2 into your command terminal and it will set it up automatically then you'll have it locally on your device so the reason we're going to use together is because uh grok doesn't have the um vision capabilities right so uh with together ai they do have the 3.290b vision instruct as well as the 11b vision instruct turbo so we're going to test out just a little bit of this just to see the image capabilities live in action all right so here we just have a very uh, image of a very large data set of i don't even know what this is to be honest um and we can just see movement d debt j movement debt j whatever the case may be so i'm just going to give it these this data set and tell it please explain this large data set to me in a very easy to understand way explain to me what it is likely about and explain to me what the data tells you about this and what we can infer all right so here you can see the data set appears to be a collection of numerical data organized into columns and rows each row represents a single observation or measurement while each column represents a specific variable or feature being measured columns movement jet debt j movement this column likely represents the type of movement or action being observed the values in this column are integers ranging from 1 to 51 suggesting that there are 51 different types of movement being studied that j okay so i'm not going to read through the whole thing but we can see of course that it did obviously read this and it did make some sort of uh inference based on the data that it's read and it seems like it's pretty correct here so pretty cool stuff this is also something really cool i just realized about together AI. you can see the ui version of what you just asked it but you can also switch to api and then you can switch to either typescript python or uh curl right here so we can see import os import together uh import together or from together import together you can see the like we can literally see this this is actually really cool that it has this um typescript so yeah i think together AI is really cool and if you're looking to build something with these new models i've always found that together ai is a good um, platform to get access to these newer models because you're going to need to run them in the cloud if you guys know any other ones like together ai that does this and it's pretty good i know there's some other ones let me know in the comments down below let me know what your favorite one is and let me know if you guys have tried out this new llama 3.2 model whether that's the on edge models within your own devices hosting them locally whether that's in olama llm studio whatever the case may be or if you've tried some of these out on the cloud or hey maybe you're already integrating some of these into your applications for it you know right away for whatever reason so let me know down below what your experiences with these are already maybe if you haven't experienced them let me know what your thoughts are about this let me know what you guys think about zuck's strategy and meta's strategy and this whole ai race and are you guys betting on some of these closed source models like claude anthropic open ai i mean I don't know if you guys have been following the AI news, but we're seeing a bunch of people leave OpenAI. Mir Murati just left OpenAI and a bunch of other top level people are leaving and have left, you know? So it's kind of interesting to see what's going on there. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Is it because of something behind the scenes? Is it because of Sam? I don't know. What do you guys think about that? That's just a little side topic. And then also too, guys, we've seen at MetaConnect today, Zuck announcing Orion. And if you haven't seen that, stay tuned to the end in just a second. I'm going to put a clip of him basically showing Orion so you can see that and let me know what your thoughts are about that do you think that actually is going to um, be really cool unlike maybe some of the older releases of the metaverse stuff even though it has started to get a little bit better um, from what we saw like it started to be a little bit cooler but it was kind of moving a bit slow for a while so do you think this new uh, Orion thing is going to really take off and be something big let me know in the comments down below guys but anyways if you're new here we upload videos every single day on AI automation business growth marketing sales etc a bunch of different stuff if you like that type of content and you got some value from this video make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads other than that guys stay tuned because like i mentioned i will be testing these models out and seeing how they compare to some of the other tests i did on 01 01 mini like 01 preview uh claude sonnet 3.5 and let's see how some of these open source models actually compare in these tests i'm very curious to see and uh, other than that guys i will see you in tomorrow's video stay tuned for that clip of zuck if you haven't seen it already keep hustling keep grinding and of course guys accelerate your stride take care
This is Orion, our first fully functioning prototype, and if I do say so, the most advanced glasses the world has ever seen. Now, about a decade ago, I, uh, you know, I started putting together a team of the best people in the world to, uh, to build these glasses. And the, the requirements are actually pretty simple. But the technical challenges to make them are insane. Um, you know, they, they need to be glasses, you know, not a headset, no wires, less than 100 grams. Uh, they need wide field of view, holographic displays, sharp enough to pick up details, <laughs> bright enough to see in different lighting conditions, large enough to display a cinema screen or multiple monitors for working wherever you go, whether you're, you're in a coffee shop or on a plane or wherever you are. And you need to be able to see through them. And people need to be able to see that through them too and make eye contact with you. Right? This isn't pass-through. This is the physical world with holograms overlaid on it. So if someone messages you, uh, you will see that. And instead of having to pull out your phone, there will just be a little hologram and with a few subtle gestures, you can reply without getting pulled away from the moment. Or if you want to be with someone who is far away, um, they're going to be able to teleport as a hologram into your living room as if they're right there with you. You're going to be able to tap your fingers and bring up a game of cards or chess or holographic ping pong or whatever it is that you want to do together. You can work or play or whatever. They're going to do voice and AI. They're going to do hand tracking and eye tracking so you can select UI elements by looking at them. But there's one more way that you're going to be able to interact with them that is really pretty neat. A neural interface. See, voice is great, but the thing is sometimes you're in public and you don't want to say what you're trying to do with your computer out loud. Hand tracking is neat for controlling different interfaces, but you don't want to like walk down the street like this. Right? So I think that you need a device that allows you to you know, just send a signal from your brain to the device. So this isn't just the first full screen, like uh, you know, full wide field of view holographic AR glasses. This is also the first device that is powered by our wrist-based neural interface. 